Hey, it's Phoenix, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the philosopher, the philosopher Karl Marx. Uh, there is a lot that can be gained from thinking about his work and the things that he has to say, though often Karl Marx is controversial because of his, of what could be perceived as Marxism or the offshoots such as communism and socialism, which can be controversial and touchy subjects. But I'm interested in Karl Marx uh, from a philosophical perspective because there is a very real way in which he has influenced philosophy, definitely influenced uh, modern leftist philosophers such as Zizek, uh, I believe Judith Butler. There is a very real way in which Karl Marx has also influenced previous philosophers as well. Uh, there are certainly philosophers such as Derrida and Foucault who could be perceived as Marxists, and I think that's a very interesting thing to keep in mind that they can perceive, be perceived in that light because of how Marx influenced them. And Marx himself is interesting because he was influenced by philosophers too. He was influenced by Hegel. And it's really interesting to think about how the dialectic kind of uh, goes through time and kind of changes through time and, and takes on different meanings. And I think that's very interesting. I think that Marx is controversial politically, but I'm not sure that his ideas are very well understood. As much as I appreciate Jordan Peterson, Peterson tends to be very critical of, definitely very critical of Marxist ideology, but I would say it is a misunderstanding. He perceives it because of the failures of communism and definitely thinking of uh, the writer of the Gulag Archipelago where Alexander is talking about the corruption of communism and just the waste, decay, destruction, evil that was happening and how so many people suffered. And I do think that all of these points are valid. But the reason why I think Marxism is important, at least from a philosophical perspective, is because of the range of possibilities with which he argues. I'm reading Capital right now, Volume 2, oddly enough, uh, because I've read parts of Volume 1, and it takes a lot of concentration to get into, a lot of effort. But I enjoy that because he's talking about a lot of interesting things, and he really understands, from my perspective, how the economy works when thinking about how money works. So he offers a lot of interesting theories about what money is, what capital is, what power even is in, in certain capacities. And certainly that is a very powerful thing to talk about. I have realized the ways in which I've adopted Marxism, the kind of really, really dark, pessimistic view that you get from people like Foucault as well when thinking about his notion of power structures and defining every relationship as a power structure, I think that is an extreme, but I think there is a real way in which the pessimism makes sense. I think that money does corrupt, or at least money does have very specific outcomes because, especially if it's unregulated, and I think that that is important to keep in mind. I don't think that it is wrong or incorrect to say that capitalism as a system may be the best system we have, but there are definitely some injustices and we have to take that into account. Marx is interesting because even though he was definitely a revolutionary and he wasn't uh, limiting himself with what he said philosophically, there's a real way in which he understood that capitalism is actually very useful. Uh, and, and I think he perceived capitalism as even being a superior system than any other economic system. And I think that's really important because he's basically pointing out the limits of his own thinking to be able to show that capitalism is essentially inevitable. And I think that when we see how it dominates uh, markets today, and dominates our society with consumerism and things like that, there is a real way in which it's definitely had a specific impact. Uh, capitalism has. And Marx at the time was aware of that. He was also aware of injustices. Karl Popper has talked about how he didn't really agree with Marx because he thought that Marx wanted to fix injustice at once, and often, as Karl Popper argued, things take deliberation and much thought. But there is a real way in which I think that Karl Marx was right to say that there are injustices and we should seek to try to alleviate them. But as for what that means, I think that's a complicated answer, though I would offer very briefly that I think it's important we try. I don't think the answer is overhauling an entire economic system. I don't think it's about displacing certain concepts uh, to be able to make way, certain concepts that work at least in some capacity to make way for something that we think might be better. Roger Scruton is actually interesting as a conservative politically and philosophically because he argues that when we want to change everything and we want to uproot everything, that can be problematic. And while I don't identify as a, a conservative in the, tra in the traditional sense of, of uh, 
Edmund Burke thinking about conservatism as being keeping the structure and keeping the system, I do see the way in which we can rebel pointlessly as well. We definitely need to be aware of what's going on. I have hoped to provide a neutral account of the philosophy of Karl Marx. He has definitely been influential to me with getting me to think about serious issues. And even though he does focus a lot on certain aspects of uh, certain aspects of our world, such as his theories of historical materialism and, and materialism itself and how limiting that can be. And even though there are many flaws with his thinking, I think for me, what's been interesting is how I've been able to delve into his philosophy and understand how he's impacted philosophy at large specifically Western philosophy, but also how we think about philosophy in general. And I think that he's really interesting in that way. I hope that you enjoyed this talk. I hope you find it useful in some ways, at least for thinking about philosophers and how they approach the world. And yeah, thank you for your time.